Hi, I'm Richard, and I've been going back and redoing some of my older videos because the sound quality was uh, bad on, on them. And one of the videos was different approaches to vibrato on the whistle. Now, I used a low D whistle, I think, because visually and also sound-wise, sometimes some of the techniques are, you can hear them clear and see them more clearly on the low whistle. <clears throat> and sorry, I have a cold. So I'm going to have to be uh, clearing my throat here pretty often, unfortunately. So sorry about that. Now, when people think about vibrato, the most common thing that people think of is a kind of vibrato that, say, an orchestral flute player will use and a lot of uh, um, formally trained singers will use. And that that's the so-called diaphragm vibrato. You're going, oh, and on flute... <clears throat> Or whistle, it kind of sounds like. Now, there's some advantages to that vibrato. Uh, for one thing, it's easy to vary the intensity of the vibrato. You can make it very subtle. You can make it stronger. You can also uh, vary the speed of it. Um, make it a rapid, more rapid vibrato or slower vibrato. <clears throat> Another advantage it has is you can play it equally on every note. However, be aware that um, most traditional Irish whistle and flute players I've seen over the years don't use it at all. What they tend to prefer to use is finger vibrato. Now, there's two different approaches to finger vibrato, and one is, I think, more akin to the way the vibrato is done on the illan pipes. And that involves fully closing and opening a hole somewhere further down the tube than the note you're playing. <clears throat> so say if you're playing F sharp. So, and so that's the actual hole that the note is emitting from. Further down the tube, you can open and close this hole. Which gives that nice kind of ill and pipey sound, right? Now in the second octave, I think it sounds too strong. But though might be okay. Uh, and then so for G, if I was to do it, I could do that same finger. Or maybe try this finger, which is maybe too much. Now on the upper hand notes, what you see a lot of traditional players do is um, sometimes use both these fingers. It's nice on B. On A, it's probably going to be too much. Yeah, so A, you might have to just do. You can experiment because each whistle is different. <clears throat> Another thing to be aware of with that sort of vibrato is that it sounds one way if you have if you're just using that finger and the other holes are open. Also, you can leave a finger down. <clears throat> so if you're here on uh, playing A, but see, so you can leave this finger down, and then if you do that one, it has a different effect. That's too much. Hear how different it sounds? Leaving that finger down. <clears throat> then another approach is to, uh, this more versatile because you have more control over it in a way, is shading. And shading involves, instead of fully open and closing, you're just kind of, sort of like tapping at the edge of it. So for G, Now you can change the angle because, of course, the further over you come, the more you're covering the hole and the, the more uh, pronounced the vibrato gets. The more you back off, the more subtle it gets. So by changing the angle, you can, you can make it more subtle or stronger. And, of 
course, it's easy to vary the speed too. Now, a lot of players, when they get up here into the uh, upper hand notes, like A, once again, they might use those two fingers together. And with C natural, To me, that's the most satisfactory is that shading method for C natural. Now there's an example where I'm, I'm holding that finger down and I'm fully closing both those holes. Which is more kind of an ill and pipey kind of sound. <clears throat> now, the shading is the only kind of finger vibrato you can do on E because you don't have any further down holes to, to cover. So you're just kind of like, sort of like tapping that finger on the edge. And I guess on F you could do the edge. Though I kind of like this one on F. Now, that's the finger vibrato. The other thing too that should be talked about is throat vibrato. <clears throat> There's a lot of American folk singers, Irish folk singers, and Irish whistle and flute players that do a rapid, shallow vibrato in their throat. And I think it's misunderstood because a lot of uh, orchestral wind players, a lot of um, formally trained singers, view uh, throat vibrato as being um, odd sounding, as being harsh, violent. It doesn't have to be any of those things. You'll hear some folk singers who have a very subtle, beautifully controlled throat, uh, throat vibrato that they're doing. Where you hear it in flutes to good effect is in um, Peru and in Bolivia. They have a, a cane flute, a notch flute called a cana. And they, well, maybe nowadays there's players that are doing something else, but in the old days, they would always use a throat vibrato and just a very musical, beautiful vibrato. <clears throat> now, throat vibrato, mine isn't super controlled, but you're sort of, and I can't do it really with it when I'm not playing, but it's sort of like you're going, <laughs> sort of like that, which sounds terrible. But on the flute, um, let's say, um, So that kind of thing. So, for example, if you, um, just to take a little made-up passage to go, that's it with no vibrato. Now this will be this with diaphragm vibrato. And here's with finger vibrato. with the throat vibrato. So just let me know in the comments if you have any questions about uh, about this. Now in my previous video what I what I did get was a lot of people um, talking about semantics and <clears throat> the thing is there's a lot of Latin or sorry Italian uh, musical terms which um, say uh, vibrato or tremolo or things like that, they basically, the words all mean the same thing. They're, they're, they're all referring to shaking, trembling or shaking. And so I think the getting into uh, the semantics of saying, well, when you use this Italian word for shake, it means this kind of thing. And if you use this other Italian word for shake, you know, it means something else. So, uh, you know, I'm not into, and I'm into linguistics, but to me that sometimes, I guess sometimes when you're, the more you're into linguistics, the more you realize that sometimes these linguistic arguments are, um, seem to be, don't make, seem to make much sense. <clears throat> now, one thing 
that it is a definite term is there's a uh, there's a French term uh, like flattement, I guess, which means flattening. And that's true that, say, if you're doing this vibrato, you're, you have the baseline note, and then you're flattening. You're going under. So you're going the baseline and below, and then back up to the baseline and below. Whereas if you're doing a, uh, a throat vibrato or a um, diaphragm vibrato, you can control with how you're blowing the note, whether you're going above and below the bass line. So that, I, I understand, I understand that uh, dis, uh, difference. But uh, ne nevertheless, I don't, um, you know, I don't get that interested in uh, language uh, or terminology um, arguments. Alrighty, so let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Uh, about these things, and uh, I will answer them as best I can.